Hello Year 12 students. Um, over the last couple of weeks I've asked you to look at the poetry of Philip Larkin, to annotate it and then last week to write an essay on uh, his poem Sunny Prestatin. Um, this particular video seeks to explore and show you really how to go about selecting a coursework question that you can apply to Philip Larkin and uh, his poems. So a few things to note right from the very beginning is that the piece of coursework you are to do is to be between 1200 and 1500 words in length, not including word count or bibliography. Because we are looking at one poet, Philip Larkin, uh, we want to, and I want you to, write about three of his poems. Uh, doing that ensures that we cover the specification in the way that you need to. Now the poems that you choose are likely to be term determined by preference really, you like them, you, you feel yourself having more to say about them. But it also needs to be determined by the question that you choose and the question that you set. That question, as I say, is set by you uh, and you choose what you want to do and then I approve it and then hopefully we get you uh, on in, in with the task of doing the piece of coursework. And we can use this period of lockdown to get that done because it's supposed to be uh, an independent piece anyway, of course. So it makes really good sense to do it now. On your screen, you can see I've got a copy of the Critical Anthology and um, we're just going to look at it. Uh, as section three, Feminist Ways of Reading. And what I've done is I've already highlighted some uh, examples of statements from this Critical Anthology that can be used manipulated a degree um, and turned into questions. So I'm not going to read it. You've already done that bit and thank you for your hard work in, in that already. But here is an example and you'll see it because it's, um, it's already highlighted. The text says most of the male characters that she examined is referring to Millet, Kate Millet. Uh, most of the characters that she examined and especially those of Miller Henry Miller, were denigrating, exploitative and repressive in their relations with women. How do you turn that into a question? You write. To what extent does Larkin seek to denigrate, exploit and repress in his representations of women in the poems X, Y, and Z. So whichever three poems you choose go into your title. And there you have a you know, reasonably straightforward question. Does he denigrate? Does he exploit? Does he repress? And, and it becomes an exercise in exploring. Is it yes? Is it no? If so, if it is yes, why? If it is the case that he, he doesn't, why not? Um, is it the case that the poet denigrates but doesn't exploit? or represses but doesn't denigrate. And you can see that to answer a question like that requires you to carefully and clearly define what, what you mean by denigrate, what you mean by exploit, and what you mean by repress, and then consider if Larkin does it, does those things according to the definitions that you lay out. Why have I, why have I highlighted that one? because that's a question I've seen in the past. That's one that's been done quite well. Um, if you want to look at Larkin um, in relation to feminism. There are a couple more that are already highlighted further down. You've seen this one in relation to the Sunny Prestatin poem. It says, if I wiggle the mouse around so you can see it from here, feminist critics showed how often literary representations of women repeated familiar cultural stereotypes. To what extent do you agree in or with regards or in relation to Larkin's poems X, Y and Z? And again you name the three poems um, and then it becomes an exercise in saying does he repeat familiar cultural stereotypes? Is it a yes? Is it a no? If he does repeat them, why? If he doesn't repeat them, why not? Um, is it the case that Larkin repeats stereotypes but maybe not the familiar ones that this particular uh, anthology suggests are familiar. 
Now in this instance, I've already highlighted it. Again, it's in green. The familiar cultural stereotypes that it asks you to discuss are, in Larkin's poems, do we see immoral and dangerous seductresses? Do we see women as the eternally dissatisfied shrew? Or does he, more to the point, does Larkin see that? And so on. Um, so does he repeat those familiar cultural stereotypes or pick other ones? Does he create his you know, different ones altogether? That's a question that really quite straightforward in the scheme of things. Um, but straightforward doesn't mean easy um, or doesn't mean simple, doesn't mean you're cheating. Just a good choice. Some other examples you can see highlighted here. And these are the only two I'm, the two I'm going to go through. Um, to what extent does Larkin in his poetry seek to continue the social and cultural domination of males? And if you think that he does that in high windows and he does that in afternoons and he does that in the wits and weddings, then you can make your case. Um, the idea, though, is that we, we sh you're trying to pick a question that sets up a debate. It shouldn't be a straightforward yes or no. Um, and so that's what we're looking for, is statements from the anthology which um, give you a chance to show off what you know about the poems and show off your ability to discuss and to debate, albeit in written form. Uh, the last one I'm just going to draw your attention to here, just just another example, that's all these are. Um, you can see the, the last line. The perpetuation of the unequal power relations between men and women. To what extent do you agree... Do, sorry, let's start that again. To what extent do you agree that in his poetry, Larkin seeks to perpetuate the unequal power relations between men and women? Lovely question again. Do you think Philip Larkin perpetuates, continues, seeks to reinforce and re-establish uh, inequality in his poetry? And if I give you a bit of a steer, it depends on the poem you look at. Because um, if we discuss something like lines on a young lady's photograph album, it seems to be fairly unequal between men and women. Um, if we look at a poem like... Um, the Wits and Weddings, one could argue that the construct of marriage um, in effect creates inequality just by the very nature of what marriage is and what marriage represents uh, and where it typically happens and um, how, how names change and all those sorts of things. Um, so as I said at the sort of near the beginning of this video, which poems you choose will likely be determined by preference, but also question. Because, four, if um, you choose this last kind of statement about the unequal power relations between men and women, you might find that a poem like this be the verse, it just isn't appropriate. It doesn't really fit the question. So that's what I'm going to push you towards doing this week, this week of the 18th of May, 2020, 2020. Um, Select your question, pick a statement, choose the poems that you want to um, apply the, the statement to, um, send it to me so that I can approve it, tweak it uh, if necessary, and then that way we can get you off, um, get you started on um, writing the beginnings of, of this particular piece of coursework. Now, the thing to say is that these examples are just that. They are only examples, mere examples. And so, if we go back to the beginning, if you didn't want to write about feminism, but you wanted to look at Larkin and Marx, well, then you go and read the anthology once more, and you pick a statement from Marx, the Marxist section. If you want to look at Larkin in relation to uh, whether it, belongs as part of the canon, then you go to the canon section. Um, and that's, that's ultimately what you're trying to do, is, is pick something. So I think that's about as straightforward as I can make it uh, in one of these short videos. For this week, start the process of picking a question, picking the poems, get that approved by me early in the week, and then uh, the task I'm going to set for the most part is 
um, about writing a good introduction. And that's it. Um, so I look forward to hearing from you later this week. And if you're looking at this at some point in the future, uh, it's not 2020, it's 2022. Well, the advice still applies. This is how to go about creating a, um, an effective NEA non-examined assessment or coursework question. Thanks very much.